At MRU, we started a new channel for the kind of economics you don't necessarily learn in class. The weird and funny applications we discuss in our free time. It's called Econ Nerds, and it's for anyone who is an econ nerd or who would like to be one. Enjoy this sample video, and if you find yourself grinning or learning something, please subscribe to Econ Nerds. You can't have it all in video games. The designers force these trade-offs where you can't be fast and strong, can't have high health and high agility, can't have good handling and good speed. Or in Mario Kart, you can't even have good handling and be a normal looking car. I mean, I love you, Teddy Buggy, but every time I pick you, my son loses respect for me. And we think life is similar. Can't be smart and well-groomed, can't be rich and normal, can't be handsome and apparently not become a dictator. Except real life isn't actually like video games. There aren't systematic trade-offs. You know, characteristics you might care about, like looks, intelligence, athletic ability, those, according to research, aren't that correlated. It's not the case that if you're smart, you're gonna be less athletic or unattractive. The relationship between two desirable traits, say like looks and smarts, is actually totally random. It looks like this. That means there are some really good looking smart people and unfortunately others that are less so. But yet we believe these trade-offs that we see in video games are true in real life. Why is that? Well, one, I think it's just hard to believe that life would be that unfair. But also it helps us cope, you know. At a young age, it became clear to me that I would not be socially successful. So I said to myself, well, I'm good at other things, right? Right? Anyway, but it's more than just a sense of fairness or cope that we believe these trade-offs are real. It's math. Turns out it even has a name, Berkson's Paradox. The classic example used to explain Berkson's Paradox is the hot jerk phenomenon. Let's put it on a graph. So guys will vary in their level of hotness and niceness. Down here, guys are nice but unattractive. We'll call this area the friend zone. Over here, guys are attractive but jerks. And we're just gonna pick a totally random name and call this the Danny Flores zone. In this zone, guys are jerks. They'll steal your date at the Sadie Hawkins Day dance. Then they'll break up with that girl just in time to steal your next date at prom. Again, this is just a totally random example, not something I'm still bitter about 20 years later. The point is, based on this graph, it seems that guys are either attractive and jerks or less attractive and nice. And if you talk to people who are dating, they will describe this as their experience. But the negative correlation observed is actually due to selection effects. In reality, there's no relationship between the two variables. It looks something like this. The issue is that when you're on the dating market, you never encounter the ugly jerks just because you don't consider them or they've just, they're just not in the market. On the other side, the attractive nice guys, they're probably already taken. So again, you don't really see them. So it's just due to those selection effects that you observe this negative relationship. And Berkson's paradox shows up in a number of places. For instance, at college, it may have seemed like there was a negative relationship between hard work and intelligence. The smart people were lazy and the hard workers just couldn't get it. But in reality, these traits are uncorrelated. It's likely that at your college, the lazy and ungifted probably weren't admitted and the smart, hardworking person was at some super selective school or already doing a startup or something else amazing. But these selection effects can make it seem like there are these correlations when they don't exist. Like I said, according to research, most of these traits seem to be uncorrelated. Okay, but what do we do with this information? Do you just sit there and be like, oh, I hope I got dealt a good hand? Well, actually, we can go back to video games. There's a different type of character. There's the type of character that gains skills as the game goes on, getting more and more powerful. That video game trope is based in science. It's called the Matthew Effect. It gets its name from a famous Bible verse in the book of Matthew. For God giveth to Mario the mushroom, then he bestoweth upon him the fire flower. Finally, a steed dubbed Yoshi was given. Woe is to Bowser, behold the OP Mario. Okay, I'm just, that's a joke. The real verse is here. But the idea is that advantages accrue. If you work at something and just get better by 1% each day, in two and a half months, you'd be twice as good. This is the power of compounding and it's real. So acquire skills early and often. 
and someday you'll be able to beat the final boss, whatever that might be. To see more videos like this one, subscribe to the Econ Nerds YouTube channel.